We're here at UCLA to discuss recent findings published in Developmental Cell. Hello, I'm Jerry Weimaster, and I'm here with my colleagues, Elliot Botvinnik and Laurence Melati Capella, to tell you about an exciting new approach outlined in our back-to-back -back papers that uses optical tweezers to test a role for mechanical force in ligand activation of notch signaling. Notch signals through a remarkable mechanism that involves proteolytic release of its intracellular domain which allows it to move to the nucleus where it directly activates expression of notch target genes. Activation of notch must be tightly controlled because inappropriate signaling causes developmental defects and cancer. It turns out that notch is folded into an inactive conformation that structural studies suggest masks or protects the proteolytic cleavage site. A pulling force model has been proposed in which following ligand binding to notch, ligand endocytosis generates a mechanical force that pulls notch apart to allow activating proteolysis for downstream signal. Consistent with this model, we could image the transfer of the notch extracellular domain from the notch cell to the ligand cell and accumulation of the notch intracellular domain in the nucleus of the notch cell, indicative of active signaling. However, we lacked biophysical evidence that ligand cells, when bound to notch, actually produce mechanical force and that this force is dependent on ligand endocytosis. Important for linking ligand endocytosis and activation to force, in Jerry's lab I had identified the endocytic components required in the ligand cell to activate signaling in the notch cell. At this point I contacted Elliot at University of California in Irvine to enlist his expertise in optical tweezers. In order to measure cell generated forces, I recommended that we replace the notch cell with a notch bead that could be trapped in a laser and placed just in contact with the ligand cell. In this way, if the cell generates force, it would displace the bead from the center of the trap, allowing us to measure cell generated force. Indeed, we determined that ligand cells could physically pull the notch bead from the center of the trap and that the exact endocytic conditions required for ligand cells to activate notch signaling were also necessary to generate this force. Furthermore, an absolute requirement of the pulling force model is for ligand binding to be stronger than ligand cell pulling forces. Otherwise, the bond would slip before notch was sufficiently unfolded to expose its proteolytic cleavage site. Using optical tweezers, we measured the ligand cell bond strength and found it to be stronger than the force produced by ligand cells bound to notch beads. Importantly, ligand binding strength was not altered when endocytosis was blocked allowing us to conclude that ligand cell pulling force, not bond strength, is dependent on endocytosis. Another important aspect of the ligand notch binding strength is that it provides an additional way to regulate not only activation of notch signaling, but also intensity of that signal. For example, notch glycosylation is known to regulate ligand binding and signal intensity. Specifically, Binding and activation by the notch ligand delta is enhanced by notch glycosylation, while jagged serrate ligands show decreased binding and activation of glycosylated notch. We are currently using optical tweezers to directly demonstrate that notch glycosylation alters ligand binding strength that directly relates to signaling intensity. Together, our studies provide strong evidence that ligand endocytosis generates a force that can pull on notch, and this identifies a new role for endocytosis in activation of a signaling system.